Okay, so this is the first uh, of two mailbags, and um, yeah, it's going to be a long one because all of a sudden, I don't know why, all these packages turned up. I did go away for a week, but when I got back, a ridiculous number of packages. So anyway, here we go. Right, so I wonder where this one is from. Oh yeah, LCSC. So um, two main places I get stuff from is LCSC and, um, and AliExpress. So sometimes AliExpress doesn't have the things that I want. Um, sometimes, you know, there's a matter of price or delivery or whatever, but this is an LCSC order. In fact, there's two orders uh, crammed into one box. So let's have a look and see what all the goodies are about. So many goodies. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm trying to get this in some sort of order. So, first ones are easy to explain. They're little trim pots, little potentiometers, um, 500 um, K, and this one is one mega ohm. So, and they are for the 555 uh, timer that we've seen before. So these are just some replacement parts. So they just sit on the uh, 555 timer. I like the fact that it's got a little handle there because I find the the ones with the little screws are actually quite difficult to manipulate. So yeah, that's the first one. Pretty straightforward, good quality. Um, I think they're about 20-ish US cents each. Um, so yeah, not too bad. All right, so the next few pieces are to do with this board here. So this is actually coming from um, PCBWay. So I'll just get a close up of that one. So here it is, and um, yeah, this is going to be fun soldering. Mostly 0603 parts, and the actual uh, main processor hasn't arrived yet, so I can't start this project. But most of the other bits and pieces have drifted in, and we'll have a look at some of those as we go through on this mailbag. So this is the program Paduk um, microprocessors or microcontrollers. And um, yeah, it requires a lot of parts, so... That's what those parts are mostly. Not everything has arrived yet, but a lot of it has. So let's have a look at some of the things that go on that board. So this is 6.2K resistors in a 0603 package. So, yeah, not really looking forward to soldering those, but... Um, 1206 I don't mind, 805 I can do, 0603 have done, but um, yeah, not entirely enjoyable. Alright, so what else have we got? So 0603 also, and this looks like 20 ohm. Would it be 20k? Hmm. Not sure. Maybe we should test that. Let's have a look. So, just grab one out. And then we'll see what the, the meter says. One thing which I have to do is go through the um, circuit diagram and label all of these because I'm um, looking at uh, that board there's no labels on the board so let's have a look in and see what it says on the top of that chip because that will help so it says 30x which I'd never seen before but apparently according to an SMD resistor code calculator um, and some new scheme I hadn't heard about 30x is 20 ohms so hmm. No, 30x. All right, so we're going to do this flicking the thing away. And we've got hmm, pretty much 20 ohms. All right, 
So that's weird, but it is what it is. So let's put that back in the packet. Of course, you always have to buy way more than what you need in these orders. So I could just throw it away, but part of me says never do that. But having put it in this packet, there's some doubt as to whether I would find it again anyway. So yeah, that's 20 ohm 0603. All right, what else did they send me? So this is a Schottky diode. And it's not giving a lot of information. Well, it's in the SOD 523 package. It's got a part number. So I have to look that up and just find out what that is and where that fits. But yeah, still part of that, I would say, at this stage, because I don't think I would have ordered one of those for fun. So it doesn't look like fun. And this one is 20K resistor in a 603 package. And we've got a 240K in a 603 package as well, plus or minus 1%. Uh, one tenth of a watt. So, yeah, not a lot of power there. What else is in the package? We've got... This looks like a regulator. So it says fixed 5.5 volt, 3.3 volt. 300 milliamps SOT 23, 23.5 regulator. Hmm. Okay. And this is an MT3608 SOT 23.6. Again, it looks like a voltage regulator. I have to check the, um, the part number on that one because there is some of this order which is just for me, but I'm not sure which is which without looking at the um, at this board a little bit more closely. Um, this is another Schottky diode, one amp. I'll get one out and have a quick look actually. See what this looks like close up. Okay, so it looks way too big for anywhere on that board. So this must be something that I ordered for me. Oh, a bit of a closer look. Yeah, so this is a Schottky diode in SMD format. And um, this is probably for the uh, candle project. Um, so that's just part of that um, board that I use for that. Okay, so continuing on our merry way, we have 10K 5 Plus or minus 5% chips in a 603. And we've got some 8 megahertz plus or minus 10 parts per million crystal resonators. So that's obviously part of this one here. So yeah, again, we'll have to have a look at the board for that. I'm not sure what that one's about. Um, we have some N-channel resistors in a SOT23 package. And this looks like it's an AS358AMTR-E1. Hmm. General purpose. Yeah, I wonder about that one. I'll have to look close look at that as well. That looks interesting. Let's get a little bit closer to that one. All right, so yeah, this is a op amp, which is part of the Paduk uh, open source programmer. Um, you can see the price there from LCSC, um, a little bit of the, the data sheet and, uh, and where it fits onto that uh, PCB. Okay, so this one is a voltage detector, 3.3 volt. So it's 
So, and it's in a TO92 package. So not for the programming project. So I'll clearly order this for some other reason. Let's get up close to those ones. Yeah, so these are some form of um, watchdog, I guess, when the when the voltage drops. So it's a supervisor. Never played with these, um, but they look interesting. The 33 AP is 3.3 volt, and the 45 AP is 4.5 volt. So looking forward to um, putting those on a breadboard and seeing what they actually do at some stage. And likewise, yeah, I think that's it's an unusual quantity, that's 70. Oh, a quantity that's quite strange. I have to check the order for that one. It says TO92 microprocessor and microcontroller supervisor. So I have to have a close look at that one as well. Okay, so next on the list... Oh, SI4599. So these are um, these are MOSFETs in a SOC8 um, format, uh, or SOIC8 it says here. Um, and this is for, um, yeah, a nice little project that um, I saw on the internet, so I'll talk more about that. Um, but that is for a basically making a watchdog timer circuit. So um, to, you know, reboot your microcontroller if it hangs. So that's part of that project. So yeah, that's that's a good thing. And what else do we have? Um, so we've got, okay, so 3.3 voltage. Well, it actually says fixed 12 volt 3.3 low dropout regulators. So again, I'm not sure if that's part of this. Project, so I'll have to check that. Um, I'd say it probably is, but we will see. And this is definitely part of it. So this is a little micro USB uh, connector. So that goes on the end of um, of this here. That's that right at the end there, and that is the connection. So we just have a quick look at these. And again, you know, you have to unfortunately order. There's minimum numbers, but. Um, yeah, that's exactly what that is. So that goes on the end of that guy. So that'll be fun to solder as well. All right, that's good. Let's see what else we have. All right, just before leaving the, um, the LCS scene, having a look at the actual little microcontroller themselves. This is another one which I've been interested in for a while, um, which is a magnetic sensor so yeah it's a hall effect sensor basically and i was interested in getting one that's a low dropout and it, they're actually quite difficult to find but this part from lcsc uh, was reasonably priced and also uh, offered low dropout uh, for a hall effect sensor so yeah I'll have a quick look at those and then we'll have a look at some of the product processes all right so this is what it looks like up close nothing written on the top of that um so yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to do a little bit of work with the data sheet. I don't want to find out how it works. All right, so here's the theory. Um, this program will be built and it'll work. <laughs> so, And then um, if we can work out how to program, uh, these are the chips that will be programmed on this board. So um, there's not all of them that I've got here, um, but there's a selection of some of them. The, the famous um, three cent chips are these ones. This is the um, PMS 150C. So it is a 1K 8-bit one-time program only. So don't get that wrong. Um, so that's um, that's these ones. So you program them once. So that's the one that's kicked off all the fuss a couple of years ago. There's the um, PFS 154. So this one is the next step up. So it is similar uh, to the, the uh, PMS 150C, but um, it is uh, it, it has flash, so you can um, you can keep programming. I think it says something like a thousand times or something like that. Um, and then there's um, there's a one five four S sixteen, which is the same as this, but has um, sixteen pins. And this is the PFS one seven three, and I think that's got 
um, 3K of, um, of memory. Um, and the, yeah, the PFS 154, that might have 2K. All quite small and all a bit of a mystery as to whether this program will work, um, whether it will be able to program it and whether I will be able to work out what code to put on it to actually get some use out of it. So, yeah, just for intellectual stimulation, it's on really. I'm not sure that these will ever be very useful, but you never know. I mean, these sorts of chips are now appearing in a lot of consumer goods. We don't know an awful lot about them. Um, a lot of the work that's been done is through reverse engineering, um, and I'll point you to some um, links on the blog for that. Let's get a couple out and just have a look, see what they look like, um, and uh, see if we can figure out, um, you know, even things like manufacturing date and things like that. Yeah, so nothing on the top, uh, which was a bit unexpected. Um, so this is the PFS154, um, and underneath there are a lot of letters, so which are hard to read. XDF01A, Ramga4000, 1942 is probably the 42nd week of 2019 for manufacture. This is what uh, the Paduk um, data sheet tells us, but none of that matches up. I actually contacted Paduk and they said, yep, it was a PFS154 just for a third party supplier. Here's the PFS173 uh, with the 16 pin. And again, nothing on the top. Very hard to uh, to find out what was underneath too. So that's a very uh, poor <laughs> picture. It's about the best I could get though. So, But uh, looking closer through a magnifying glass, I was actually able to pull these letters off and again, yeah, they don't mean an awful lot, really. Anything that makes sense here is um, the 12th week of 2019 for manufacture. The rest is high-quality gibberish. Okay, so back to normalcy, I hope. So let's have a look at this one. It says... What does it say? It says it is inductors. Hmm. Inductors. Twelve package inductors. Here we go. Something's down the bottom. All right. Anything else in that package? Interesting. So we have 68 micro Henry, 100 pieces. So they are in fact inductors. So I think this is actually for the Paduk programming. Yes, it is. So these are surface mount. Let's get in and have a closer look at those ones. Yeah, so we might um, wrap it up here for the um, for the actual mailbag. But um, yeah, these are 6.8 Mark Henry inductors. I'll see you next time.